Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. My new nine partial differential equations called Emma Aguali's equations were the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News, the flagship publication of the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. I was not on the cover of the top mathematics publications because I was good-looking. I was on the cover of the top mathematics publications because I contributed to mathematics. That publicity amongst the community of research mathematicians led to a last-minute invitation for me to come to the equivalence of the Olympic Games for mathematicians. I was invited to present my mathematical discoveries in person and to answer questions from research mathematicians attending that mathematics congress. I gave that mathematics lecture on my contributions to mathematics on July 8, 1991, in Washington, D.C. Nine years earlier, in November 1982, I gave a version of my mathematics lecture to U.S. government computational scientists, and I gave that lecture a short walk from the White House, Washington, D.C. The venue of my 1982 research mathematics lecture was an hour's jogging from the venue of my 1991 research mathematics lecture at the International Mathematics Congress. In hindsight, that lecture of 1980, November 1982 was a seminal moment in the history of computational mathematics. I was the lone wolf computational mathematician that stood at the crossroad where algebra, calculus, and computing met. In that night, November 1982 lecture, I was an unknown black African mathematician in an ocean of white mathematicians. And for that reason, only one person attended my lecture. The unspoken assumption behind their boycott of my research mathematics lecture was that a large audience of white mathematicians learning new calculus and new algebra and learning it from a 28-year-old black research mathematician will grant that mathematician legitimacy and thus become a tacit endorsement of black mathematical prowess and acknowledging the contributions of black Africans to modern mathematical knowledge. By 1981, I was, by 1991, I was well known for my contributions to mathematical knowledge. For that, for that reason, my research mathematics lectures filled all the seats in the lecture auditorium. As, and the research mathematics lecture that I delivered on July 8, 1991 to the International Congress of Mathematicians drew a capacity crowd. That Congress of Mathematicians is held once every four years. That Congress is to the mathematician what the Olympic Games is to the athlete. A research mathematician that contributed new mathematics to mathematical knowledge is an athlete of the mathematical mind. 
There are one million mathematicians in the world. And the cream amongst those mathematicians attended the International Congress of Mathematics. The top 1% of mathematicians or 10,000 research mathematicians read of my mathematical discoveries and my contributions of new calculus and new algebra to mathematical knowledge and read my mathematical discoveries through the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News that is the bi-monthly news journal of record of the mathematics community that is published by the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. That cover story in the Siam News was the reason I was invited to present my mathematical discoveries of my new of my my mathematical discoveries of my new algebra and my new calculus to ICM. The acronym to IC to the ICM, the acronym for the International Congress of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. My ICM 91 lecture was at 11 a.m. Monday, July 8, 1991, in the Dover Room of the Washington Sheraton Hotel in Washington, in the District of Columbia, United States. I was familiar with the Smithsonian's National Zoo in the Washington DC neighborhood of that ICM meeting. I must have jogged across that neighborhood of the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington DC at least 100 times since October 1978. That mathematics conference was billed as the largest gathering of mathematicians ever. At age four, along the Ruba Road, an adjacent to the Eagle Club, Sapele, Western Region, Nigeria, British West Africa, I had my first pair of shoes. The shoes were gifts for the Christmas of 1958. At first, I struggled to put my feet into those shoes. The reason was that I did not understand that a shoe must fit a foot. My aha moment was when I discovered why the shoe for the right leg was not fitting into my left leg. The same thing occurs in mathematics. As a research parallel processing computational mathematician, one of my basic premises was that each partial differential equation of mathematics, of mathematical physics, must be congruent with the laws of physics it encodes and must not be contradictory to the law of physics it arose from. To be specific, the three physical forces, namely pressure, viscous and gravitational forces in the partial differential equations used by the petroleum industry and written in the calculus textbooks on porous media flows cannot be congruent to the four physical forces, namely inertial pressure, viscous and gravitational forces that drove the mild deep oil and gas to flow across the oil, the Oloibiri oil field of Nigeria, or to flow across any oil field. It's just as incongruent as the sculpture of a dog with only three legs is incongruent to the actual dog that it represents. After correcting the 36 mathematical errors, or inventing the 36 partial derivative terms that we are missing in production petroleum reservoir simulators that we are used by every oil company. I continued on a two-dimensional blackboard and finished on 
536 three-dimensional motherboards that simultaneously emailed messages to places that I visualized as the 65,536 vertices of a cube in a 16-dimensional hyperspace that were equidistantly distributed across the surface of a tightly circumscribing sphere in the same 16-dimensional hyperspace. That is, I visualized my global network of 65,536 processors in the 16th dimension, but I actualized it in the third dimension. Leapfrogging upwards from the third dimension in space into the 16th dimension in hyperspace leaves the non-mathematician to wonder where did the extra 13 dimensions come from? Or go to. On my motherboard, the extra 13 orthogonal dimensions were compressed into the depth, height, and width directions. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, harnessing the total computing power of my global network of 65,000. 536 processors that outlined and defined my new internet was as challenging as dancing on hot coals. A lot to learn, discover, or invent in the beginning. But in the end, it became natural. The 65,536 simultaneously sent and synchronously received email messages we are like bullets out of my eyes the importance of computational science was underscored in an article that was in the may 8 1987 issue of the chronicle of higher education the flagship newspaper that presents news to universities that article was written by computer and information technology writer Judith Axler Turner. The article was titled, quote, Some Hail Computational Science as Biggest Advance Since Newton Galileo, unquote. Three years later, my 4th of July of 1989 experimental discovery was how to use a massively parallel processing supercomputer to solve an initial boundary value problem of modern calculus and extreme scale computational physics. I mathematically discovered how to correctly encode Isaac Newton's second law of motion of physics into the partial differential equation of modern calculus that encodes the multi-phase flow of oil, water, and natural gas that are flowing from a water injection well to an oil and gas production well. That root of that modern calculus was co-discovered 330 years ago by Isaac Newton. My experimental discovery that occurred on the 4th of July of 1989 made the news headlines as the biggest advance in computational mathematics and in computational physics. One year after my experimental discovery, and in the June 27, 1990 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education, Judith Axler Turner wrote that I, Philip Emma Aguale, quote, took on an enormously difficult problem, solved it alone, has won computation stop prize, captured in the past only by seasoned research teams, unquote. Dalono, Afam bu chukura Philip Emma Agwale, Abum Onyonicha, Biagafum na Emma Agwale dot com, Commercia.
I'm Philip Emagwale at emagwale.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.